Hey everybody, as many of you know, um, last year I was in a situation where I had to leave my home and the situation that I was in caused me to have uh, problems between me and Doug as well. So I left uh, with the help of two YouTubers, um, one that uh, took me in the first night Debbie Lynn, super, super, super nice family. Amazing. I mean, I don't think I've ever met such a welcoming and warm family, open and fun and kind, uh, the whole household. And then um, on to Irene's. Um, she came there as well to the barbecue, and that's where we left from. Uh, that Debbie Lynn had, the barbecue. So, we were the only two YouTubers that showed up. The only two. And, um, let's just, I wasn't going to put any of this out there. Uh, some things, some things happened. They weren't major things, but they happened while I was with Irene. And I confided in three friends, just three. I confided in them um, once I left Irene's and I spoke to them on a private hangout. I didn't want to tell a large group. I wanted to know who I was telling. You know, I didn't want 10 people knowing about this. And I wanted just to confide in some friends. And it wasn't like I was traumatized or uh, my nerves were shot or I was just in tears. It was nothing like that. It was just... um. It was what it was. Some things happened and they made me feel a specific way. And at 45 years old, I'm a pretty good judge of what's going on. So um, I wasn't going to do this video because I didn't want to put it out there. I didn't, I didn't want to put that out there. Irene wasn't even supposed to know that I had that conversation because it in no way affected the way I felt about her as a friend. Um, you know how you really don't know anybody until you spend nine days living with them. You really don't. And uh, that that's what happened with me. Uh, Joe and Irene were very good to me. Uh, they took me out to eat a lot. Uh, she took me shopping and she bought me clothes. Went to a lot of thrift stores, which is what I preferred because I didn't want her spending her money on me like that. I did have some of the money, not from the GoFund, not from the GoFundMe, but from the PayPal she brought to me. Um, she brought it to me at Debbie Lynn's and she handed it to me and said, here, I want everyone to see, I'm giving Corey the money. And I was like, oh, thank you. And she handed it to me and I hugged her, I cried and um, I thanked her more for exactly. helping me. Aaron's in school today, but Jack's here, so. Okay. She gives me the money. She makes a point to make sure that everybody in the room sees her give me the envelope. Uh, I took it. Um, I've heard some people say on that guru site that um, I demanded the money immediately. I didn't even mention the money. I didn't have the chance to mention the money. No sooner had she come in the door and hugged me and hugged Debbie Lynn and said hi to everybody and everybody. Francis, everybody, she hands me the money. She sits on the couch beside me and she hands me the envelope. So I had that money and I wanted to use that money. Okay. Um, she hands me the money. I have that money and I was going to use that money to purchase whatever I needed. That's what the money was for, for me to be able to tend to what I needed to have. Um, I thought Irene had done enough just by taking me in. So I wanted to buy everything myself. She would not let me. She would not let me purchase anything. Um, uh, at one point, we were at a store and I needed a hair clip to hold my hair up. And I knew she was going to try to pay for it. So I scrambled up to the cashier real quick and I paid for it. A few incidents happened, and it started the first night in the hotel room. She took her shower. I took my shower. I made some jokes about it being a really fancy schmancy place. You know, it's nothing like um, 
Motel 6, and by the way, they don't leave the light on for you, <laughs> but uh, this place was really swank. I mean, there's nicer places out there, obviously, but this place was pretty sweet. And she took her shower. I took my shower. And um, she makes a lesbian comment. I don't even know what that was about. It was, um, she said something to the effect of, uh, um, oh gosh. I mean, I had just got out of the shower and I'm in my bed. She's in her bed. And she says, oh gosh, I just can't wait to hear all the trolls saying, Corey and Irene are having a lesbian affair because they're in a hotel room together alone. And now I've just met Irene. I've known her online. I've known her online, but I don't know her know her. And that just seemed a little bit forward and weird. And I said, well, the only um, problem there is they would be full of crap because no one in this room is a lesbian. <laughs> you know, that was my best way to, you know, and it didn't seem like that big of a deal, but hindsight and all that. There was, like I say, on the way to get something to eat before I left, and the, the comment was made, oh, they're all going to be saying that me, you, and Joe were having a menage a trois because you stayed with us this nine days. And Joe was really put off by that, and he went, oh, oh, Irene, don't, don't say stuff like that. What? Oh, no, no. I mean, he just, he wasn't feeling it. You know, I think he was a little embarrassed. I just need for everyone to understand that I don't give a crap what the people on the guru site say. It's the fact that all of a sudden, here comes an email from someone who does know me. And this is what they say about me? You know, that's that's not acceptable. I can't, I'm not going to deal with that. Mm -mm, no. A lot of comments were made. Um, there was a during my stay there, there was a point where she told me that, uh, well, she was she would stare at my boobs. She would stare at some of the clothes that she bought me. One of the shirts was low cut and we were on an off air hangout. And um, she, I was sitting at the, at the laptop in her room. I went and said hi to her and she says, oh, come sit down, say hi to everybody. They're all on, they're asking where you are and how are you doing? So I was like, okay. So she says, well, here, you sit in my spot. She gets off the bed. She lets me sit in her spot. And I put the, it's a little, it's a little laptop. It's more of a net book. So I've got that sitting there on a pillow. And she's sitting beside me, kind of laying, almost like up on her elbow. And um, she looks up at me and I notice out of my peripheral, I can see her looking at my boobs and I'm talking to everybody. Well, then she turns the, she turns the whole thing so that she's not in view at all. And then she just sits there smiling, staring at my boobs. And then she look away. So my boobs look away. And it just made me feel uncomfortable. Um, I, I've, I tried to um, put off that her and Joe were trying to just make me feel good, bring my spirits up, making me feel good about myself in a positive way. But collectively, everything, all of the different incidents of her, like, um, looking at my boobs, couldn't keep her hands off my hair, like this, the whole, from the day I met her, the, the very moment I met her, no sooner had she, oh, here we go, no sooner had she got to Debbie Lynn's, and she was like this, like this. It was constant and I was like, God, this is so awkward. I mean, but I was so appreciative that she was helping me. But at 45, well, I was 44 at the time at 44 years old. I just, it was fucking awkward. And it's on the video. The video is on Debbie Lenar's page. It's me, her and Irene sitting on the couch and the first video of all three of us and Irina steadily rubbing my hair and looking up at me, rubbing my hair, admiration galore. And it was just, it was really uncomfortable. And it was just, like I say, hindsight after the nine days that I spent, I was supposed to stay just for the weekend until Monday. That's what we had talked about. And, um, she said before I ever left and, and went there, she says to me, no, take a week. You need about a week um, to get yourself settled, get your mind straight, find out what you're going to do. Just take a break. 
I was like, okay, fine. That That's amazing for you to offer that to me. I appreciate it so much. So when it started to approach the seven day mark, um, Mike Zeus Zeus, who had bought my bus ticket to get to Debbie Lynn's, wanted to buy the one for the train to Florida. Um, the original plan before I left was that somebody was going to meet me at Irene's, pick me up and drive me back. But before I ever left North Carolina, that was snubbed. I was like, I have nobody. I have nobody to come get me. So just forget it. Call it off. And there are a room full of people on this off-air hangout that heard it, including Jimmy Rance. Um, no, no, no. We're still going to do this. Don't you worry. We'll get you there, hon. We'll get you there. Uh, I'm in a position now. I'm emotional and I really need to rely on somebody. I don't rely on anybody. I don't rely on people for anything. I have Doug. That's what I've always had. I've had Doug. That's where a partnership. Um, he takes care of me and he, and he takes care of his kids. That's what men do. And um, I, needed, I needed help. I had to swallow my pride and take it. Take the help. So I did. Now, it's been said by Irene in her email that she so freely distributes to anyone who asks for it that, um, by the way, I hadn't asked for it and I didn't see it till it ended up on the Guru site. Uh, I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. I didn't think for a second Irene would say the things that she said. Said I lied. I didn't lie. I, 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 she's never even said what the lie was. She has no, I'm rambling at this point. I'm going to get to everything. So <clears throat> that seven days turned into nine, not 10. And that was because of Irene. She was determined that she was going to buy that ticket and not Mike. I said, Mike wants to buy it. Let him buy it. You said yourself, it makes him feel good. He wants to be my hero. She said it. Everyone on the hangout heard her. Mike wants to be my knight in shining armor. So, for me to not know Mike very well, by the way, we talked on the phone quite often. He would call me just to check on me and say, I just want to make sure you're doing okay. Do you need anything? And I would tell him, no, I'm fine. And we would talk for sometimes 10 minutes, sometimes for half an hour. And that was when I got to Florida. I was staying here. So, Irene was determined to um, buy my ticket. So she bought my ticket. We got the cheapest one and it was like, an, it would extend my stay for two more days or three more days. And she went, that's fine. That's fine. Don't worry about it. So um, there you go. <laughs> uh, that's why I ended up staying for nine days instead of the, what, two or three days that I was supposed to stay before I ever left on this trip. Um. I'm just, I'm trying to cover every base without being mean. I, I just want to put the facts out there. But it seems to me that um, Irene wants to be mean. So I've supposedly lied to her. Now, this email that she received from my mother, I saw it. It, it arrived while I was there. And she calls me in her room and she says, uh, Corey, uh, I need you to see this. Is this your mother? My heart dropped. I don't speak to my mother. Um, okay. I don't speak to my mother. Let's just, I've never done a video about my mother. And there's a reason for it. I'm past it. It's behind me. And if you're wondering what it is, just use your imagination. Okay. Um, I had to let that one go. I had to let it go. Um, it was just, it put me in a better place to do that for my family, you know, for Doug and for the kids and the boys. Now, I looked at Irene after I read the email where my mother said that I was a con and that I use people. This coming from a woman that, okay, we're not going to go there. Um, and I looked at Irene and I said, I have never shared with you about my mother. She said, I don't know anything about your mother. I've never told you anything. I've never told anybody much. A couple of private things, you know, one-on-one -on -one when I needed to talk. But 
I told Irene, I guess we need to have a talk about my mother now that she's put herself out there uh, with some pretty hurtful things. So I told Irene about my mother. She opened up to me about her mother. I'm not Irene, so I'm not going to put anything out there about her mother because that would make me no better than Irene. But she shared with me as well um, about her mother and her daughter and her brother. And um, for Irene to be putting that out there as fact after what I told her about my mother and she's going to use something from my mother against me. Um, I call her mother because she's biologically my mother. She's not my mama. She's not my mom. She's my mother. So I, I needed to just say that whatever it is that, you know, my mother said in that email, and I never told Irene to delete it. I, I never did. I never did. That's a lie. That's a flat lie. Um, Irene doesn't have the balls to come out and say this stuff openly. She wants to share it with trolls and anyone who asks for it. She should have known it was going to be out there for everyone to see. She just fed the trolls, and in doing so, she did herself a bad thing. Um, I'm not going to say anything bad about uh, Joe, because Joe hasn't said anything about me. There's nothing out there from Joe about me. Irene is the, I don't want to say the aggressor, but she pulls the strings in that house. She really pulls the strings in that house with her emotions. Um, she completely controls. And it was like being being at my mother's house again. So I was, I was ready to leave. You know, she was nice to me. But just seeing how she controlled things and um, with Joe. But uh, nice guy. Really nice man. Super nice man. Um, there was one incident. But I'm not going to. Uh, I, I do believe Irene's the instigator. I do. Now, I, you know, I did my own clothes. I kept my room clean, my bed made. I kept my bathroom clean. Uh, Irene had nothing bad to say about me. Nothing. Um, she got on Hangout off air. We were still doing those off air Hangouts. I'd pop in. There'd be somebody there to speak to. And somebody made the joke about, I bet Corey's a bad house guest, just joking around. I think it was Jimmy, actually. And Irene said, no. No, she's absolutely not. Amazing house guest. Best house guest I've ever had. Um, she's welcomed here anytime. Perfect house guest. That was what Irene said to a whole group. And um, that group knows it. Now, all of a sudden, I'm a liar. Oh, she claims I haven't had any contact with her. That after she helped me, I responded to her one time. I'm going to just share with you... Uh, all the one times that I actually contacted her. Okay. Um, there were quite a few emails from me. Uh, texts. Sorry. Um, it, it was quite a while before I knew Irene wasn't speaking to me anymore. It was a while. And then when I finally realized that she was, for some reason, not speaking to me and nobody seemed to know why, nobody could tell me, um, I didn't push the issue, you know, because I was, I was hurt that my friend was not my friend anymore. So, um, the last thing that I got from her, let's see. Okay, here we go. We texted on Wednesday, August 26. And after that, um, we spoke on the phone a couple of times, I think twice. But you have to keep in mind that uh, when I first moved to Florida, I was emotional. I mean, I was so emotional. I shut in. I've shut in. My friend Sherry can tell you I stayed in my room more than anything. 
And I just tried to figure out where my life was. I didn't speak to anybody. I spoke to nobody. So then, um, on the 17th of September, I said, <clears throat> hi, Irene, you probably already know things have changed a great deal here. Things have turned. Doug came to me and gave up his new job, the house that's nearly paid off and the grandkids. And he gave up his mother and brother. He was standing in my bedroom when I woke up Friday morning. I jumped up, wrapped my arms around him, and he stood there hugging. We stood there hugging, crying for about 20 minutes, whispering, I'm sorry, and I miss you, and I love you a lot. He'd driven all night just to be able to wake me with this surprise. He said he couldn't stomach my grief in the last video I posted and knew he had to come to me. Shane told him, Dad, if, if you want Mom, stop asking for her and just go get her. Had he done it any other way, it wouldn't have gone over well with me. I'm too damn pig-headed. My heart feels whole again for the first time in almost two years. He already had work interviews lined up and resumes sent out before he left NC. Some people are mad that they have inadvertently funded the saving of a marriage. They would feel better if I would reject my marriage to save face in the commu community. Had I not left, things would have never improved. I did not see this coming, and I'm shocked that he walked away from his personal life, and I'm glad he did. I never knew he and I could be so happy together, but I also never knew a life without negative interference from outside. That was at 12.45 p.m. on that day. And then I said, I hope you and Joe and the fur babies are fantastic and amazing as ever. And then five minutes after that, I typed in, I can't thank you enough for helping me because she wasn't responding. And I was like, what the hell? Um, I can't thank you enough for helping me get out of a terrible and dangerous situation. I have you to thank for saving my marriage. No response. October the 4th. Hi, Irene. I hope you, Joe, and the pups are faring well in this storm. There was a really bad storm at that time and it hit her area pretty bad. No response. Um, nothing. I have other texts that I sent from my other phone before it broke, but I can't access them now, obviously. Um, on January the 25th, I did message her. One, two, two texts. They were both very long. Let's just say that they were not kind. And I said, I couldn't believe that she would sit there and say I was a liar and um, not be able to say what I lied about. Um, let's, let's not throw accusations and then just back away from them and go deal with it. No, what did I lie about? Tell me what I lied about. Um, she said in her email uh, that got posted for everyone to see, thankfully, because I didn't know what it said. She said that um, <clears throat> I did off-air, live, private, nude shows and offered lap dances and showed my breasts. Something to that effect. She said it was out of her presence, but she heard about it. Someone she found out a few weeks ago. Uh, so now she's speaking about something that someone told her. But she's not going to tell me who told her this. So there's no way that I can face the one who accuses me of it. Well, at this point, Irene, you're the one that's accusing me of it. So, um, I, you know, I didn't want to do this video. And the more I thought about it and talked to Doug about it, and I thought, no, why shouldn't I defend myself? I've kept my mouth shut. I did not put her out there. And rather than come to me and say, Corey, did I make you feel uncomfortable while you were there? I had no idea. Or say, Corey, how dare you say I made you feel uncomfortable? We did so much for you. Say something. Um, but no. Mm -mm, no. Uh, we're just going to bash Corey and make shit up about her. She said she was made a fool of. Who the hell made a fool of her? I don't know what she's talking about. Again, making an, a statement and nothing to back it up. Um, the trolls got to her, <laughs> basically, and called her a fool and everything else to make her feel dumb for helping me. And they got to her because she's weak. Um, she literally told me one day when I was staying with her 
that Joe was very on the fence about me coming there. He didn't want me there. He didn't know me. And she kept pushing the issue until he finally one day just came in the room and said to her, that woman you're trying to bring here, show me her. And I was like, what? She went, he just said, show, show me her, show me, show her to me. So I did. And I went, you showed him to me? Yeah. I showed him one of your pictures. I went and she said, and he turned around, walked away and said, she can come. <laughs> that literally was said. That's, I went just by looking at my picture. She went, yeah, he said, she can come. Um, there were a couple of other incidents. I'm not going to put it out there, but I needed everyone to know that I am going to defend myself. The only thing that I did wrong was confiding in three people the way it made me feel a couple of the things that happened while I was there. Um, I'm not going to take away from Joe and Irene that they helped me out a great deal. They were really good to me. Um, there were just some awkward incidents that made me feel uncomfortable. And I shared that with three friends. And I don't know which of those three friends put it out there. I don't even think it matters anymore. I'm finding out really quickly that um, I have very, very, very true real friends on here. I could probably count them on two hands. And um, it, that was just me confiding in somebody, something that happened that made me feel awkward. Uh, I tolerated Irene. And I'm going to say tolerate because just because you're helping me out doesn't give you the right to bash my friends and me just keep my mouth shut. But I did keep my mouth shut. I heard her bash Rosie to no end. And I just had to sit there. I just had to sit there because Irene was my friend as well. And Irene was doing an amazing amount of stuff for me at the time. She was doing a lot for, for me. I listened to her mock RV dub for being a whiner and literally put on a show in a crepe shop we were eating at where she literally mocked RV dub. I wish I could do it, but I cannot possibly pull it off as high pitched as she did. But she was like, Oh, poor me. My husband died. Boo hoo. Everybody feels sorry for me. What will I ever do with my poor pitiful life? Poo, poo, poo. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And it went on and on and on. And Joe looked at me and went, she's good at that, isn't she? And I went, yeah. What do you say? Um, but she mocked those two mainly. She mocked a couple of others. Uh, you know, if, if we're going to let Irene go out there and tear Corey a new asshole with a bunch of lies, then Corey's going to go out there and tear some new asshole with some a bunch of tr truths. I mean, I'm going to go truth. I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm going to go truth. I'm not going to take anything away from her for helping me. She did. She did an amazing job helping me out. Um, I, I credit her with saving my marriage still. Uh, because if she hadn't have extended her helping hand to me to come stay there, and be there for me if I needed to talk, which I, I didn't talk to her a whole lot. I didn't want to be a burden on her more than I already felt that I was, even though she said I wasn't a burden. I, you know, um, you know, I, I would, if she hadn't have done all that for me, then I wouldn't, me and Doug would be, I'd be in North Carolina. I would either be injured, dead, or me and Doug would be split and um, I'm not going to take away from Irene what she has come into her that's good as well but I'm not going to sit here and be publicly ridiculed and lied about and have nobody picking apart her email where she says I lied to her but doesn't say what I lied about and then turns around and says um, that she found out she found out someone told her that I was doing these boob things I don't know if she's saying that I was doing them at her house or that I was doing them in general. I don't know. Um, for some reason, this community thinks that I do off-air sexy things. I don't. I can say that I don't 
till my face turns blue, but I don't. I mean, no one's going to believe me unless they want to. Um, I'm not trying to prove anything to the ones who think I do, because if they think that I do, then they don't matter to me because they don't know me. The ones who know me know I don't do that shit. Um, I don't know what else to say about this other than I, I, I think I've had my piece. There were a couple other incidents. I'm not going to pick all of them apart. Um, Irene has her own little skeletons that I'm going to keep to myself um, that I witnessed while I was there and heard about. And um, I'm not going to I'm not going to put all that out there because it has nothing to do with me. It doesn't pertain to my situation. And I'm better than that. I'm better than that. Um, like I say, I don't know who told Irene about this little random conversation that I had uh, where I confided in three people. Um, but let's just say that of the three people that I confided in, one of them is still very, 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 very close to Irene and has started calling me a pathological liar. And that coming from a pathological liar is comical. Um, somebody that's got 20 some years on the internet and has been proven to be a liar repeatedly is going to call me one. I don't really care. Pot, meat, kettle. Okay. Um, okay. This has ran long. I'm going to have to edit it down a whole lot. And I may even not use it. I may have to redo it. I don't know. But uh, thanks for stopping by and letting me have my say. And uh, everybody have an amazing day.